Hello my friends, now we are going to discuss about the non-destructive inspections. So, in the same topic our now subtopic is the dye penetrant inspection. So, what is dye penetrant inspections? So, generally the dye penetrant inspections in short form generally we are calling it as a DPI is also called the liquid penetrant inspections LPI or maybe the penetrant testing PT. It is widely applied and low cost inspection method used to locate surface breaking defects in all non porous materials like metals, plastics or maybe the ceramics. This technique is used to detect casting, forging and welding surface defects such as hairline cracks, surface porosity, leaks in new products and fatigue cracks on or maybe the in service components. History of the penetrant testing before 1900s a very early surface inspection techniques involved the rubbing of carbon black on glazed pottery whereby the carbon black would settle in surface cracks rendering them visible. Sometimes it may happen that we are having anything uh, object in white in color. So, it is very difficult to get the cracks over there. So, now if we rub anything black over the black materials or maybe the black color onto that and if we clean it. So, since uh, we can easily visualize the crack line by that black uh, nature. Later it became the practice in railway workshops to examine iron and steel components by the oil and wheating method. 1900s oil and wheating method. So, generally in this method a heavy oil commonly available in railway workshops was diluted with kerosene in large tanks. So, that locomotive parts such as wheels could be submerged. So, first we are doing the pre cleaning then dipping in a hot bath of oil. After removal and careful cleaning the surface was then coated with a fine suspension of chalk in alcohol. So, that a white surface layer was formed once the alcohol had evaporated. So, coating with fi a fine suspension of chalk in alcohol is taking place. And last the object was then vibrated by being stuck with a hammer causing the residual oil in any surface cracks to seep out and strain the while coating. And last it is then carefully examined with magnifying glass. So, simple first we are detecting the cracks and then we are seeing it properly. In 1940s visible dye penetrant method has come. More effective penetrating oil containing highly visible dyes were then developed to enhance flaw detection capability. This method known as the visible or color contrast dye penetrant method is still used quite extensively today. In 1942 fluorescence dye penetrant method has come. In 1942 fluorescent dye were added to the liquid penetrant. These days would then fluorescence when exposed to ultraviolet light sometimes referred to as black light rendering indications from cracks and other surfaces flaws more readily visible to uh, inspectors. Many of these early developments were carried out by Magna Flux in Chicago, Illinois, USA in association with Switzer Brothers, Cleveland, Ohio, USA. Now, what are the principles? of this dye penetrant inspections. Generally DPI is based upon capillary action where low surface tension fluid penetrates into clean and dry surface breaking discontinuities. What is capillary action? Also known as capillary T, capillary motion, capillary effect or wicking. It is the ability of a liquid to flow in narrow spaces without the assistance of or even in opposition to external forces like gravity. It occurs because of intermolecular forces between the liquid and surrounding solid surfaces. If the diameter of tube is sufficiently small then combination of surface tension and adhesive forces between the liquid and container will act to propel the liquid inside. So, this is the capillary action in tubes of varying diameters. What are the examples? Generally water movement in plant against the force of gravity. So, root hairs absorb water and nutrients from the soil and it is going to the top. Human body has miles of capillaries that carry blood to our entire body. 
by which the blood flow is taking place inside our body. What is the test procedure? Basic processing steps of dye penetrant inspections are as, as follows. First is that surface preparations, then penetrant application, penetrant dwell, then excess penetrant removal, developer application, indication development, inspections and last one is the final one is called the post cleaning. First surface penetration. Most critical steps of a liquid penetrant inspections. The surface must be, must be free of oil, grease, water or other contaminants that may prevent penetrant from entering flaws. The sample may also require itching if mechanical operations such as machining, sanding or maybe the grid blasting, sometimes we are calling it as a sand blasting also have been performed because these operations can smear metal over the flow opening and prevent the penetrant from entering. So, first you have to clean the surface properly. Second penetrant applications, once the surface has been thoroughly cleaned and dried, the penetrant material is applied by spraying, brushing or maybe the immersing the part in a penetrant bath. So, the penetrant is going inside that cracks or maybe the pores. Next penetrant dwell, the penetrant is left on the surface for a sufficient time to allow as much penetrant as possible to be drawn from or to seep into a defect, so that it can take the whole area. Penetrant dwell time is the total time that the penetrant is in contact with the part surface. Next excess penetrant removal. This is the most delicate part of the inspection procedure because the excess penetrant must be removed from the surface of the sample while removing as little penetrant as possible from defects itself. So, we have to take out only the excess penetrant not that penetrant which has already entered inside the cracks or maybe the pores. Depending on the penetrant system used, this step may involve cleaning with a solvent direct rinsing with water or first treating the part with an emulsifier and then rinsing with water. The next one is called the developer application. A thin layer of developer is then applied to the sample to draw penetrant trapped in flaws back to the surface where it will be visible. Developer come in a variety of forms that may be applied by dusting, dry powder, dipping or spraying wet developers. So, now we are using the developer. Then indication development, the developer is allowed to stand on the part surface for a period of time sufficient to permit the extraction of the trapped penetrant out of any surface flaws. This development time is usually a minimum of 10 minutes, significantly longer times may be necessary for tight cracks. Then next one is the inspections or maybe the evaluation. Inspections is then performed under appropriate lightning to detect indications from any flaws which may be present. So, this one and the last one is called the post cleaning. The test surface is often cleaned after inspection and recording of defects especially if post inspection coating process are scheduled. Now, what are the penetrant materials generally we are using? The penetrants are mixtures of organic solvents which are characterized by their ability to wet materials, spread rapidly and penetrate into minute. These materials used today are much more sophisticated than kerosene and whiting first used by railroad inspectors near the turn of 20th century. Today's penetrants are carefully formulated to produce the level of sensitivity desired by the inspector. What are the characteristics of liquid penetrants should have? To perform well, a penetrant must possess a number of important characteristics. What are those? It should spread easily over the surface being inspected. It should be easily drawn into discontinuities by capillary action. It should not be harmful to the inspector or the material being tested. It should possess high indicating capabil capability and less dwell time. It should remain in fluid state. It should not affect the physical and chemical properties of the testing material. It should be cohesive, adhesive and relatively low in cost. Now, what are the classification of penetrant materials? 
So, on the basis of physical properties generally fluorescent penetrance and the visual penetrance. On the basis of penetrant removal technique it should be solvent removable, water washable, post emulsifiable. On the basis of strength of indications level half ultra low sensitivity, level 1 low sensitivity, level 2 medium sensitivity, level 3 high sensitivity, level 4 ultra high sensitivity. Classification of penetrants on the basis of their physical properties. On the basis of their physical properties penetrants are classified as fluorescent penetrants and the visual penetrants. What is visible liquid penetrants? They are usually red in color and produces a contrasting indications against the white developer background. They do not require a darkened area and an ultraviolet light in order to make an inspections. This is the biggest example that I am using this particular pen on this whiteboard that is also red in color. So, it is giving you a clear indications that where I am pointing out. They are also less vulnerable to contamination from things such as cleaning fluid that can significantly reduce the strength of a fluorescent indications. Then next come to the fluorescent penetrants. They are generally green in color and contain dye that glows brightly when exposed to UV light. From this particular image you can see that we can clearly see the cracks or maybe the pores. These systems are more sensitive than visible penetrant systems because the eye is drawn to the glow of the fluorescencing indications. Now, on the basis of method used to remove the excess penetrant from the part, there are four methods. One is called the method A, water washable, method B, post emulsifiable lipophilic method C solvent removable, method D post emulsifiable hydrophilic. So, method A also called as self emulsifying systems can be removed from part by rinsing with water alone. These penetrants contain an emulsifying agent or maybe detergent that makes it possible to wash the penetrant from the past surface with water alone. Method B in these lipophilic systems Penetrant is oil soluble and interacts with oil based emulsifier to make removal possible. Method C solvent removable penetrants require the use of a solvent to remove the penetrant from the part itself. Method D post emulsifiable hydrophilic systems used an emulsifier that is a water soluble detergent which lifts the excess penetrant from the surface of a part with a water wash. Now, classification of penetrants on the basis of their strength of indication. Penetrants are also formulated to produce a variety of sensitivity levels. The higher the sensitivity level, the smaller the defect that the penetrant systems is capable of detecting. The five sensitivity levels are level half ultra low sensitivity, level 1 low sensitivity, level 2 medium sensitivity, level 3 high sensitivity, level 4 ultra high sensitivity. So, in this particular case you can understand that low sensitivity means we are not getting that much of effect, but when you are talking about the high sensitivity we are clearly seeing all the defects over there. If it is more tiny also we can clearly see. So, every sensitivity level is having their own limitations. As the sensitivity level increases so does the number of non relevant indications. Therefore, a penetrant needs to be selected that will find the defects of interest, but not produce too many non relevant indications. So, it depends if we need a very high quality inspections, if the parts is very very essentials or may be very very costly. In that case we need to take care all the cracks or pores, in this case we need the high sensitivity penetrants over there. And if we need only the ordinary testing. So, that time we can go for the low sensitivity penetrants. Now, properties of the good penetrant first one is called the capillarity. It is the ability of a liquid to flow in narrow spaces without the assistance of external forces. This property helps the penetrant to fill a void. So, when we are using the meniscus over there we are dipping it into the liquid due to that capillary rise the meniscus is filled. 
the liquid is going inside the meniscus itself. So, this is known as the capillarity testing. Second is that surface energy, surface weighting capability. One of the important characteristics of a liquid penetrant material is its ability to freely weight the surface of the object being inspected. So, one way to quantify a liquid surface weighting characteristics is to measure the contact angle of a drop of liquid placed on the surface of an object. The contact angle is the angle formed by the solid liquid interface and the liquid vapor interface measured from the side of the liquid. Liquid weight surfaces when the contact angle is less than 90 degree. For a penetrant material to be effective, the contact angle should be as small as possible. In fact, the contact angle for most liquid penetrants is very close to 0 degree. So, in this particular case, larger contact angle means poor weighting. So, contact angle is small contact angle is the good weighting means the penetrant is homogeneously dispersed onto the surface. Next come to the viscosity, it is the internal resistance of a liquid to flow. A fluid that is highly viscous has a high resistance and flows slower than a low viscosity fluid. Liquids such as water that flow easily have a lower viscosity than do liquids such as honey. It has little effect on the ability of a penetrant materials to enter a defect, but it does have an effect on the speed at which the penetrant fills a defect. Yes, of course. If the viscosity is higher, the movement of that part for that particular penetrant is also higher. The penetrants with less viscosity fill the cracks in less time, that is quite obvious. Next one is called the specific gravity. It is the ratio of density of a substance to the density of distilled water at 40 degree Fahrenheit or maybe the 4 degree centigrade. Most commercial penetrants have a specific gravity of less than 1 primarily because they are made up of a organic materials having low specific gravities. For this reason, water contamination sinks to the bottom of the penetrant tank. Next one is that water washable penetrant thermal stability. It is the ability of water washable penetrants to resist physical changes under normal operating conditions. Sixth is the volatility. Volatility is characterized by the vapor pressure or boiling point of a liquid. It is associated with the evaporation rate of liquids and it is desirable for penetrant materials to have a low volatility at or maybe the high boiling point. High volatility results in a loss of penetrations in open tanks. A high volatile material will dry on the part during the penetrant dwell, leaving a film that is difficult to remove. Entrapped penetrant having high volatility would also have a tendency to dry or lose its liquid properties resulting in failure to bleed back out of a discontinuity to produce an indications. So, in this particular case stronger bonds lower volatility if the time is increasing in these directions. In this case the weaker bonds and the higher volatility. Fluorescent dye thermal stability. The dye used in fluorescent dye penetrants lose their brightness or color when subject to a elevated temperature. This loss is termed as the heat fade. Aerospace material specifications AMS 2644 specifies the maximum allowable brightness loss as a function of penetrant sensitivity. Thermal stability is an important consideration during hot air drying before or after developer applications. Next is the flash point. Flash point is the temperature at which sufficient flammable vapor is given of a liquid to form an explosive mixture in air over the liquid. The flash point does not affect the performance of a penetrant. High flash points are desirable to reduce the hazard of fire. Next one is the removability. This term describes two conflicting requirements for a penetrant the ability to be removed from a surface leaving little or no residual background, residence to being removed from discontinuities. In order to meet the first requirement, the penetrant must maintain the dyes in solution even when in the form of a thin film on the surface of a part and without its more volatile components that have been lost during the dwell time. 
The second requirement is made by the penetrant in discontinuities resisting the removal process. Next come to the developer. It is a role of a developer to pull the trap penetrant materials out of defects and spread it out on the surface of the part, so it can be seen by an inspector. It also provides a light background to increase contrast when visual penetrant is used. Fine developer particles both reflect and retract the incident ultraviolet light, allowing more of it to interact with the penetrant causing more efficient fluorescence. Developers also create a white background, so there is a greater degree of contrast between the indications and the surrounding background. What are the characteristics of a good developer? It should have good absorption characteristics, it should be chemically inert with test material, it should be able to uniformly cover the surface with thinly smooth coating, good contrast background for bright and clean indications, it should be non-toxic, it should be easy to remove after inspections. What are the classification of developers? Developer classifications is based on the method that the developer is applied. There are four forms of developers in general use. First is called the water soluble developers, then dry powder developers, water suspendable developers and the non aqueous developers. What is water soluble developers? They consist of a group of chemicals that are dissolved in water and form a developer layer when the water is evaporated away. So, that means we are using the water to make that particular developer. The best method for applying water soluble developer is by spraying it on the part, dipping or maybe the brushing the solution onto the surface is sometimes used, but these methods are less desirable. What is dry powder developer? Dry powder developer is generally considered to be the less sensitive, but it is inexpensive to use and easy to apply. Dry developers are white fluffy powder that can be applied to a thoroughly dry surface in a number of ways. What is the advantages? When a dry developer is used, indications tend to stray by bright and sharp since the penetrant has a limited amount of room to spread. So, this is the image. What are the limitations? Since dry powder developers only stick to the area where penetrant is present, the dry developer does not provide a uniform white background as the other forms of developers do. Having a uniform light background is very important for a visible inspection to be effective and since dry developers do not provide one, they are seldom used for visible inspections. What are the applications? So, generally it can be used for dipping parts in a container of developer, it can be used for puffer to dust parts with developer, using electrostatic powder spray guns, placing part in a dust cabinet where developer is blown around and allowed to settle on the part. So, these all are the applications. Next water suspendable developers. Water suspendable developers consist of insoluble developer particles suspended in water. Water suspendable developers require frequent steering and agitations to keep the particles from settling out of the suspension. Yes, it should not be settled down at the bottom. So, continuous steering is required. Water suspendable developers are applied to parts in the same manner as water soluble developers. Parts coated with a water suspendable developer must be forced, dried just as parts coated with a water soluble developers are forced dried. The surface of a part coated with a water suspendable developer will have a slightly translucent white coating. Next one is called the non aqueous developers. Non aqueous developers suspend the developer in a volatile solvent and are typically applied with a spray gun. Non aqueous developers are commonly distributed in aerosol spray cans for portability. The solvent tends to pull penetrant from the indications by solvent action. Since the solvent is highly volatile, force drying is not required. Now, common uses of dye penetrant inspections. So, generally the dye penetrant inspections is one of the most widely used non destructive evaluation methods. It is popular in nature and it can be attributed to two main factors for its easy of use and its flexibility. 
DPI offers flexibility in performing inspections because it can be applied in large variety of materials ranging from the automotive spark plugs to critical aircraft components. So, there are n number of applications of this technique. DPI can be used to inspect almost any material provided that its surface is not extremely rough or maybe the porous. It is not that I am putting any kind of uh, penetrant or maybe the developer and it is absorbing the same, that time it is not possible. Materials that are commonly inspected using DPI include the following like metals, like aluminum, copper, steel, titanium, glass, many ceramic materials, rubber and also the plastics. Now, types of discontinuities that can be detected via DPI, die penetrant inspections can detect all discontinuities that are open to the surface, rolled products like cracks, seams, laminations, castings, cold shards, hot tears, porosity, blow holes, shrinkage, forgings, cracks, laps, external bars, welds, cracks, porosity, undercut, overlap, lack of fusion, lack of penetration, spin holes others like fatigue cracks, quench cracks, grinding cracks, overload and the impact fractures. So, this kind of defects we can easily find by this technique. So, here all are the examples that how we are detecting these cracks. Now, typical penetrate indications, the size of the indications or accumulations of penetrant will show the extent of defect and the brilliance will be a measure of its depth. Deep cracks will hold more penetrant and will be broader and more brilliant. Very fine openings can hold only small amounts of penetrants and will appear as fine lines. So, for defects casting porosity, so generally the spherical surface indications. So, this is the example. Casting cold shut generally dotted lines, for cracks straight continuous surface lines. So, this is the example, hot tears ragged line of variable width, hot treat cracks multiple irregular lines. So, for different defects there are different types of penetrate indications accordingly. Last one is the very tight crack series of very small dots in the continuous form. So, this is the example. False indications, it is an accumulation of penetrant caused by a drop of penetrant left on the work piece. There are two conditions which may create accumulations of penetrant that are sometimes confused with the true crack and the discontinuities. First one, indications due to inadequate removal of penetrant during rinse process or contamination from work area or maybe the hands, that time we can get some false information. Second, non relevant indications caused by actual surface discontinuities that are present by design, example raised lettering to identify parts, press fit parts, etcetera. Sometimes we are making some kind of impressions, writing some names, some numbers or maybe the parts number. So, that time also it can give some kind of false interpretations. This type of indications can be identified since they are regular in form and shape. Safety precautions in DPI, when proper health and safety precautions are followed, liquid penetrant inspections operations can be completed without any harm to inspection personnel. Some of the most common safety concerns are chemical safety like flammability, use exhaust fan to disperse vapors, ignition sources must be avoided like skin irritations, wear gloves to protect hands, wear safety glasses to protect eyes from splashing. Ultraviolet light safety, lamps get hot, so be cautious, report missing or cracked filter on lamps, UV rays can cause sunburn and eye damage if filters not used or not functional. Typical applications of DPI for aerospace industry, typical components that are checked by this method include turbine, rotor disc, blades, aircraft wheels, castings, forgings and welded assemblies. Automobile, many automotive parts particularly aluminum, castings and forging including pistons and cylinder heads are subjected to this form of quality checks before assembly. For railways, generally it detects the cracking is also used for the regular in service examination of the bogey frames of railway locomotive and the rolling stock. For tools and dies, 
generally drill bits, drill pipes, casting and drilling equipment are inspected by this particular method. Inspection on reactors and tanks, tanks, vessels, reactors, piping, dyers in the chemical and petrochemical industries. What are the advantages of DPI? This method has high sensitivity to small surface discontinuities. This method has few material limitations, metallic and non-metallic, magnetic and non-magnetic and conductive and non-conductive materials may be inspected. So, that is why we are using these techniques for various materials. So, it is having a very wide applications. Large areas and large volumes of parts materials can be inspected rapidly and at low cost. Parts with complex geometric shapes are routinely inspected. Indications are produced directly on the surface of the part and constitute a visual representations of the flaw. Aerosol spray can make penetrant materials very portable. Penetrant materials and associated equipment are relatively inexpensive. Of course, there are certain limitations. What are those? Only surface breaking defects can be detected. So, it cannot go inside the material, which we cannot see by from the outside. Only materials with a relatively non-porous and smooth surface can be inspected. Pre-cleaning is critical since contaminants can mask defects. Metal smearing from machining, grinding and grit or vapor blasting must be removed prior to DPI. The inspector must have direct access to the surface being inspected. Surface finish and roughness can affect inspection sensitivity. Multiple process operations must be performed under controlled conditions. Post cleaning of acceptable parts of materials is required. Chemical handling due to toxicity and flammability and proper disposal is required. Now, we have come to the last slide of this particular lecture. So, in summary we can say that die penetrant inspection is one of the most widely used for low cost inspection method. It can be used to locate all kinds of surface breaking flaws in all non porous materials like metal, plastics, polymers, ceramics everywhere. Penetrants are classified on the basis of their physical properties, removal techniques and their strength of indication. Developers are classified on the basis of the method of their application. Proper health and safety precautions must be followed while performing this particular test. Thank you very much.